Does this country have a far-right problem? Lord Moylan, does the country have a far-right problem? I don't think so, actually. <clears throat> and, um, um, I mean, there are always a few nutcases all over the place. We have a far-left problem as well. Um, we have a pro-Gaza problem. We have lots of people out on the street doing things we don't want to do. Uh, we don't want them to do. But I don't think we have a problem in the sense that we have real problems, like we have a, may get on to this later, we have a housing problem. That is a real problem that we can actually do something about. The government can do something about. Um, but I don't think we've got a problem in that sense. No. Chris Curtis? <clears throat> well, I mean, we should start by saying that the scenes that we've been seeing in Southport are devastating, and I can't even believe to imagine what it's like for the, the grieving families up there having to watch this um, on top of you know, on top of the what, what they've already seen this happening in their local community, and we do need to we do need to call for for the violence to stop. We do need to call out the actions um, that have happened, and, and and we do need to support the police um, in clamping down on it. I mean, the scenes that we saw at the mosque uh, yesterday were, were devastating. So uh, we don't want to be seeing more of that. I mean, I, we should be calling out. Uh, any sort of extremism in our country, whether it comes from um, the far right, the far left, or anybody else, and I think we should be we should be calling out this as well. I mean, I think part of it's a far right problem. I think we've also got a problem with social media and fake news, which is one of the things that really made this explode. And I think we do need to call on social media companies to be doing more uh, to be ensuring that fake news is not spreading like wildfire around their platforms as it currently is. Um, and we do need to be holding to account those who are organising um, a lot of these, um, uh, you know, a lot of the a lot of the violence that we've seen on the streets in recent days. Can I ask you about what uh, uh, the deputy prime minister said on LBC earlier today? She inferred that she's thinking about the possibility of prescribing some of these far right groups. Would you back a government move to engage in a formal ban? Well, I mean, <laughs> the Deputy Prime Minister is available, has a lot more information available to her on that decision than I do. If she comes to the decision that that's the right thing to do, then ultimately um, I would back her in doing that. But I think actually the long-term solution to this is thinking about how we can be much better right across the country at bringing communities together, at uh, ensuring that we can be more coherent, better integrated communities, um, avoiding that fake news spreading around on social media, avoiding the filter bubbles that we end up getting on social media that pushes people into those extreme positions in the first place. We can do prescribing um, organisations, but that's ultimately, you know, what we need to you know, that's we, we need to do, have a kind of a cure, not just treat the symptoms. And I think going after that, you know, solving the social media issue is going to be a big part of that. Zoe Strimple, have we got a far right problem in the UK? Yeah, but there's always a far right problem. Um, the UK has a long history of a far right problem. But having said that, it's not nearly as big as the far left problem, as we've seen from, as mentioned, the uh, pro Hamas protests, some of which is pro. Gaza, pro-Palestine, lots of it's pro-Hamas, um, from Just Stop Oil, from the kind of incredibly disruptive, kind of almost messianic far-left protesting that's going on. I think the problem is that the far-right problem tends to be hugely overhyped because we do live in a caring society that's liberal. So there's a cultural agenda there that is still kind of, you know, for good reasons from the sort of skinhead period and the, and, the, and obviously the Nazis and, you know, the mid-century. the mid -century. But there seems to be, it's much easier politically to say, oh, no, the problem is the far-right, when actually the far-right, the far-left, which includes people whose views come from some minority groups, is a lot harder to kind of uh, condemn. And I, I would like to see prescription of the Iranian Revolutionary Guards. I think I think there's way more pressing groups than the far right, which, I mean, I've spoken to people in the armed, formerly quite senior in, in the armed forces and working on counter-terror um, in, in police as well. And they say that they are forced to to kind of treat far right terrorism as, as a threat on a par um, with, with anything coming out of um, the, the Muslim community, for instance, or the far left. Um, and it's just it's just not reality but there's a there's a there's a political and cultural agenda there that makes us all pretend it is rachel cunliffe there will be lots of people watching those scenes in southport who say britain does have a far-right problem i think it's impossible to watch those scenes and, and not see the problem there because clearly a number of individuals uh, perhaps fueled by fake news on social media perhaps with their uh, their, their, their own preconceptions uh, and their own political agendas decided to hijack a tragedy, yeah. the deaths of three children, mm. to organise, and it was organised, to 
bust their supporters, their their, their allies in to a grieving. I would say it, it's not just a tragedy. Point. It was an, it was an execution and a murder. So they got it all wrong about who's responsible. But it wasn't just something that fell out of the sky. And so it's understandable that people felt there's a perpetrator and they're tired of X Y Z. Now it's the X Y Z that is the thing that we have to debate whether. But, that's but they weren't they, they weren't they weren't there to protest against misogyny. You could have said that the target of that attack was a Taylor Swift themed dance class. It's very clear what demographic the perpetrator was targeting there. They weren't making a case about violence against women. They immediately pinpointed a culprit that fitted their political agenda and they have further damaged a grieving community in order to make a political point. But, but it was a migrant. Statement. It was someone from Rwanda. So of course there's nothing... It wasn't the someone most... from Rwanda. Well, it was somebody who was born in the, in the UK. Well, and to yeah, be clear, the investigation is still underway and it's, you know, we... we, we Part of this relates to this impatience that seems to exist uh, for the police to provide information about what actually happened. So it also doesn't matter if people got the reasoning or some of the facts wrong about this. It. It's, it's not a rational response for people in a country to bust yeah, people up to town well. in order yeah. to commit violent acts, that is really serious, violent, extreme acts. I agree with that. And, yeah. you know, yeah, the, the, this argument about far right, far left, we, we, we can't become a country where that is seen as a reasonable response. And we That's do right. deserve to call that out and we need to give our support to the police in uh, in cracking down on that kind of behaviour. Okay, 